It sounds like a fairy tale when you say where everybody is. You know, this guy is the vice president of a record label. This guy is a very, you know, huge artist. This guy is traveling the world. is a known DJ and doing all these projects and musics and platinum and plaques. And this guy is signing artists over here. Everybody is, um, you know, the music industry at that time from the independent level is kind of an entrepreneurial type of process where especially here in Chicago, we didn't have any labels giving us budgets unless you went outside of the city to, to, to bring some budget back. To, to, so to have that drive as an entrepreneur, you know, I'm, for a great deal of my life, I've been an entrepreneur and it's not always easy. I mean, you take the ups, you take the downs, you're investing all your money back into yourself. A lot of times you're undercapitalized. You don't have enough money to really run the business like and do all the ideas you have in your head. But, you know, you try to make the best use of what you have. So to see people in these positions now, you have to imagine it was hard for me to imagine that because essentially you have a network of entrepreneurs that were able to place themselves within the system and come out with good professions at the end from something that we did as kids that would have been very hard if you would have set me back in 1989 and been like, this guy is going to be this, this guy is going to be that. I mean, I probably would have laughed. Just not that I didn't believe in my brothers and or, or myself or not that I didn't, wouldn't think that anybody had that potential. It was just such a huge gap from where we are were then to where everybody is right now to be able to figure out, you know, how is this going to happen? You know, how are these steps going to work out, you know, had no idea. As, as, as I go back to the, to the thought I was having before, being entrepreneurs, right? When I first moved from San Francisco, I mean, from Chicago to San Francisco, my wife is from San Francisco, met her in New York, we lived in Chicago briefly, but decided to educate our kids in uh, California. So I moved there. And when I went there, I still had that entrepreneurial mindset with two little kids, family, you know. And um, I really was just thinking about, you know, what I, you know, what type of business am I going to start or what am I going to do? And um, I stumbled onto this, um, this job. Uh, my wife told me about it and she said it was a project and that, you know, she thinks it's something that I could do because I mean, if people know me, for those who don't know me, I like to build stuff. I had been renovating houses and renovating my retail store way back early on in the 90s, just way ahead of the game. I just, I don't know, two type of guy. I say on that song on um, No ID's album that every carpenter has a tool, at least a cheap set. You know, just references a lot of, you know, building and a lot of real estate because that was my thing. So this job that they had was that... Uh, Lucasfilm was moving into a new building and they were going to have a position where somebody could do that type of hands-on work where it was like, you know, setting up offices, moving furniture, doing things. And it was a project. And I was like, oh, it's a one-month project. I can do that. I'll do that. This is one month and then I'll, you know, still go figure out what I'm going to do. Now it's, I don't know, it's over a decade later, 13 years, I've still been there. And when I first went there, I, uh, the one thing I knew is that I wanted to stay into in entertainment. You know, if I couldn't do the music side of entertainment, then I was going to do some form of entertainment because that's something that I'm very passionate about, entertainment. So to go on the film side was really intriguing to me because I was like, oh, wow. I never, I had no concept, no idea, coming from an entrepreneurial stance to see how someone like George was such an accomplished entrepreneur with such a huge brand, you know, when you get to that level, you know, what what does that look like, right? I'm coming from very small, like I said, undercapitalized entrepreneurship to something that's just like mega. It's like, yo, what is this? And then to see, to be in a environment with so many creative and talented people. I mean, not just not just artists. Everyone there can do something else probably just as good as they can do art. Music, play guitar, play instruments, ride motorcycles, work on cars, whatever. Everyone has this other thing that they can do, but everybody's so talented at what they do. So just to be in that environment has just really 
taught me like a whole lot about um, working with creative, which is when, when you work with a creative person, I think that you're working with a different type of individual. You're not, it's not the, you know, creative person. You, you, you got to give them a, a certain space. You got to know how to work with them and allow them to still be creative where you still need to do what you need to do. So I think that being in the um, film industry showed me a lot about working with creative people. It showed me a lot about, um, learned a lot about, and I still don't think we do this to the degree that we need to do this, but the way you should respect your intellectual property, the level at which with your intellectual property is any content that you can create that it may be um, tangible. Sometimes it's not tangible. Sometimes it's intellectual. Sometimes it's just an idea or, or a painting or it's a concept. They really nurture it and really protect it to the level where it's like, you know, you, NDA, you know, different things, you know, different things. So it's, it's, it's just that level was like, wow, you know, sometimes I think we take our art, we, we handle it a little loosely, you know, we don't, we have our intellectual property, but we don't really treat it like a, you know, soft or, you know, nice little baby that you have that, you know, you want to take care of because you believe in it to that extent. I mean, there's so many things I could talk. I, I could be here all day just saying how many things I've learned. And it's just like, I've just, I've had so many years of dealing with all type of people, executive types, creative types, and just, just working with them. And um, it's a beautiful family. The film industry is a very close family. Um, I never knew before I started working there that, you know, when the, when the film is going and the credits are going, I need to stay to the end and cheer these people on because they've spent most of their life, you know, for the last two years working on a section or a piece of this movie. And it was, you know, they, they sacrificed a lot of time from their family. They put in a lot of long hours. And it's great to just stay now, you know, to the end of the credits and, you know, clap and cheer them on and to be able to do that. So that whole film industry is just, it was, it's, it's, um, it's another world. There's thousands of transferable skills that you can take from the film industry and use them, you know, anywhere else but to be in that environment and to be a childhood fan of course of Star Wars right I mean that's where those were all the toys I circled in the JC Penny catalog I don't know you kids might not some of y'all might not know about the JC Penny catalog out there but back then when when you wanted something and you made a wish list you just went in the catalog and circled it like this is what I want you know so you know mine was full of land speeders and tie fighters and x-wing fighters I used to draw them and you know I was really like you know, fascinated by it, but that's one thing. That's another thing. And I also, I, I, I've also learned from that industry that I love the way that when the technology doesn't exist, you don't have to wait for anybody to create it. Just make it. Make it yourself. Now, I'm not, you know, speaking about a certain individual or a certain company. I'm speaking of the industry in general. When something, when you need a tool that will improve your creativity and take it to another level and no one else has made it. I'm challenging the young kids out there to, you know, create the tool, make the tool. It doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a start, make the tool, develop the tool, take it to the next level and you never know. So that's something that I personally could take away to be like, when, when you're a super user, when I keep using this term super user, super users are everywhere to me. There's guys that will play a video game at its maximum level. Like, they're so good that, you know, they're, they're using the, the controller at its maximum level, hitting the buttons at its maximum level. They have the high score. Those guys are what I call super users. When you can use something so good, even if it's a hammer, and you're so good with just one, two, hammering nails, one, two, hammering in nails, there's something that you know as a super user that could improve your process. And when those people can reach that level and then invent that tool they need to take everything to the next level, there's a lot of gold in there. To me, that's, that's something that I've learned and take away from the table. That's like, ah, uh, I need to do that.